Well, greetings everyone. This is Kevin, your host, The Aptrepreneur, and welcome to The Aptrepreneur Show. I got that completely mixed up. I Let's start it over. Over. Hey everyone, welcome to The Aptrepreneur Show. I am your host, Kevin, The Aptrepreneur. This is your daily dose, or near daily dose, we'll get to that in a moment, of apps, gig economy, technology, streaming wars, and even a little bit of entertainment in the middle. Now then, you might have noticed that this usual daily show is not only did not happen yesterday, but today's show is a little late. And the reason it's a little late is, of course, in the title itself, because I was not feeling very well yesterday. In fact, I haven't been feeling very well for most of the week. Um, it started on Sunday. I remember feeling like a little tightness in my chest, like it kind of felt like heartburn. But it couldn't have been heartburn because I didn't eat anything spicy. I um, didn't eat any pizza, anything with sauce, any anything with a kick in it. I just didn't. But I had this really big tightness in my chest. The next day, I, on Monday, I still had it. But I had one more issue, which I'm not going to talk about, but... There was another symptom of the creepy crud that's out there. That same night, um, I randomly, in the middle of the night, felt like I really needed to vomit. I didn't, but I felt like I really needed to. The next day, I started getting a fever. And here's the thing. I I'm as tough as any American. I, I don't sweat these things usually. Drink a lot of OJ, get some sleep, you know, that, I'm that kind of guy. But, uh, however, because of what's going on, even though I don't recall coming into contact with anyone that might have had COVID-19, I decided, you know what, I, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get tested for COVID-19. I mean, I almost have to. I, I have a wife. One of the reasons I've been taking the lockdown and the masks and stuff super seriously is because if I get it, I'm positive I'll survive. If she gets it, then there's a pretty good chance she doesn't survive. So I'm taking this very seriously. So I call my doctor and I lay out the symptoms, all three or four of them. The doctor says it probably isn't, but it is wise to check. So today, even though I'm feeling a little better, and in fact, the fever has gone down, down quite a bit, I went and I got tested for COVID-19. I will have the results in 24 to 40 hours, so maybe tomorrow I can share with you what those results are. But I have to admit, it wasn't as scary as I thought, because you hear things like you should probably get tested for things. You kind of wonder, like, what's the process? What are they going to do? And it was really simple. Like, it was so simple that the only thing that is more easy to do during this whole pandemic is to wear your damn mask. Otherwise, this was pretty close to being easier than that. All they do is they take two swabs. They take one from the back of your throat, which is uncomfortable, I admit, and then they put a cotton swab up your nose, like way up there. You can kind of feel it and, uh, you know, eyes water and every, everything. I'm not going to say it was comfortable. It wasn't comfortable. However, <laughs> um, <laughs> here's... That, you know, it was just, it was easy. It took maybe five minutes to do the whole thing. Now, Seattle Build says, Kevin, if you've ever got a flu shot before, you automatically test positive for it, even though you don't have it. Well, here's the funny thing then, because I don't get flu shots. I don't get flu shots. And here's why I don't get flu shots. I don't get flu shots because flu shots will kill me. Y you think I'm exaggerating? No, I'm not. When I was five or six... I had Guillain-Barre, which is an attack on the neurosystem, which more or less paralyzes you. I mean, you're, you're not, I mean, it's like, it's just like you're, yeah, you're, you're, uh, yeah, the wires that makes you move and stuff, like, it's not fun. And back when I got it, it was like, I wouldn't say it was fairly new, but there wasn't a lot of good ways to treat it. So they were like prepared for years upon years upon years in the hospital. That didn't happen. I was actually in the hospital, I think, for maybe a couple months. 
who knows? I, I actually forget, but I remember one day waking up and uh, I, I remember freaking my, my nurse out because we had like a Nintendo Entertainment System in the room. And I woke up one day and I wanted to play Mickey Mouse Capades on the NES. Uh, looked that game up. And I remember getting out of bed and sitting in the chair and playing it, which you're not supposed to do. Not even realizing, like, hey, I'm getting out of bed. And the nurse came in and freaked out, like, what are you doing up? It's like I wanted to play the game. And, you know, so I think a few days, a week or so after that, they, they let me go home. They, they were actually quite amazed. However, because I got that, I can no longer get a flu shot. Like, th this is one of the reasons I get the flu so often is because I cannot get a flu shot because the flu shot would be way worse for me than the, a than the actual flu. So, I don't get flu shots. You know, that's, that's for health reasons. So, in, so, that, so, I guess my test result for COVID-19 will be more accurate then because I've never had the flu shot before. And yeah, I'm hoping that it'll be negative. You know, who knows? I mean, I, I'm starting to feel better. You know, it's just a few days, but you just never, you, you never know. So, um... Anyway, that's the news that is going on in my personal life. That is why there was no episode yesterday. That is why we are late today. But enough about my personal life. Hey, I see 20 people here. If you're here, give the video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. But let's start talking about the news, which is going to be a complete mystery to everyone here because of the title of the video. So then, um, le so let's talk about the first topic of the day. And the first topic of the day, let's just talk about Uber and Lyft right from the get-go. Let's get that out of the way. Because here's the thing, we've been having conversations on my channel quite a bit about, you know, Uber and Lyft and drivers and their employment rights. Now, as I, you know, time goes on, more and more and more of my viewers want to remain independent contractors. They are very, very vocal about that. They don't want to be an employee. They want to be an independent contractor. My argument has been, for most of the time, that you are independent contractor name only. It's not like you're actually doing anything that's independent except getting on and off whenever you want. I mean, do you get access to your passenger's information so that you can build a relationship with them outside of the Uber app? Do you control the rates? Do you control the bonuses? If you don't want to wear a mask while you are driving for Uber and Lyft, can you say, it's my own personal business, I'm not going to wear a mask and not get deactivated? No, no, no. You're an employee, except Uber and Lyft don't want to treat you like... that. Well, they want to treat you like employees. They don't want to treat you like an independent contractor. If you were a true independent contractor... There, you, they, you can be an independent contractor, and Uber and Lyft can let you be independent contractors, but they don't want you to be. And then came AB5, that basically was there to reclassify drivers as independent, from independent contractors to employees, because that's what you are. That is what you're being treated as. Now, again, I need to clarify, just because AB5 exists, Uber and Lyft can still let you be independent contractors. Heck, they can let you have a lot of the freedoms you have now and be employees if they want. They can do a lot of things, but they don't want to because they want to have control over you. But what? But just because AB5 passed doesn't mean that they were going to follow it. In fact, they said that they were not following it because they believed that they did not fall under AB5, which begs the question, why did they spend so much money to fight it? Why did they spend so much money to fight it if it didn't affect them? Well, basically, what this boiled down to is California says... Your, your driver, make your driver's employees. Uber and Lyft say, make us. And California is saying, okay, we will. Because they are seeking to force Uber and Lyft to reclassify drivers as employees within weeks. This is from Business Insider. So here's what the article sa says. California is planning to file court documents that could force Uber and Lyft to reclassify drivers as employees within weeks, according to a press release Wednesday from Attorney General Javier Becerra. Becerra's office plans to seek a preliminary injunction against Uber and Lyft, which, if a court agrees, would require them to grant drivers employment status while they await the outcome of a pending lawsuit over the issue, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. Quote, Bercia says, 
It's time for Uber and Lyft to own up to their responsibilities and the people who make them successful, their workers. Misclassifying your workers as consultants or independent contractors simply means you want your workers or taxpayers to foot the bill for obligations you have as an employer, whether it's paying a legal wage or overtime, providing sick leave, or providing unemployment insurance. In May, Ber- uh, Becerra and City Attorneys General from Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego sued Uber and Lyft, accusing the ride-hailing companies of miscategorizing their drivers as independent contractors under the state's gig work law AB5. Earlier this month, the state regulator that oversees Uber and Lyft ruled that drivers are considered employees under the law. So here's here's the reality, and I know some of my viewers will disagree. Your employees. You're absolutely employees. I don't care. I mean, well, I mean, I don't want to discourage you from leaving comments, obviously. But if you leave a comment and you say, I don't want to be an employee, it doesn't matter. You are an employee. California views you as an employee under every measurable metric. You are an employee. You were employed before AB5 was slawed, was, uh, sorry, signed into law. You absolutely were. Stop being in denial. You're an employee. And California is going to make sure that that happens. Now, yeah, you can argue that you don't want to be employees. You can argue you want to stay independent. And you know, hey, we can have that conversation, obviously. But you are an employee. California is making this a thing. And I want to stress again and again, Uber and Lyft could let you be independent. They have to give up some of their own things. However... Like, they have to start letting you, you know, set your own rates. They have to let you start interacting with your customers on a more personal basis. They have to let you run like you are your own business. But you are, they can do it, and then you can be independent. They don't want to do that, though. Hence, you are an employee in California, it looks like, is going to actually force the issue. Now, will the judge actually grant California's motion? Who knows? I don't know. I'm not a judge. However, it's just, this is a warning to all of you out there in California. You are probably going to be classified as employee. We will probably start laying people off as a result. I've been saying, well, I've been saying for years, it's, it's time to get out of um, ride share. I've been telling you for years. And during the pandemic, I especially thought it was time to get out of ride share. Well, you don't want to be an employee, even though you technically have an employee all this time. Guess what? You might want to start considering your exit strategy because you're probably going to be an employee very, very soon. So anyway, that's where we're going to leave that story. But what do you think? Uh, of course, I welcome your opinions. I welcome your thoughts. You know, we do have have you know an open um, y- you know an open conversation. So you know the drill. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Now, before we get to the second topic, thank you, uh, Thomas Cass, for the super chat and um he writes i think most want to be independent contractors because they are on government um i'm gonna say funding friend of mine makes seven seventeen dollars per per mile um ssi um okay okay well right now there might be a case because for yeah if you're you can be on government assistance and do uber and lyft you know and make some extra money in fact unfortunately i know someone the reason they do rideshare still is because they owe a lot of child support and child support does not get deducted if you're driving uber and lyft maybe i'm going to actually leave this part in the main video i'll just you know but anyway so yeah there's there's still reasons people do it but you know so Anyway, I see we have 29 people. Thank you for watching. Hey, give it a thumbs up if you're liking this so far. It would really help. And thank you again, Thomas Cass. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, Even though I took a sip of Thomas, drink off to you. For the $5 super chat, my drink. Oh, I just dropped my, I just dropped my Apple TV remote. (laughs) Oh, well. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about the second main topic. And the second main topic we have to talk about what has surprisingly been a topic that a lot of people here has been concerned about our good friend Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese as with a lot of businesses 
has been hit hard by the pandemic. And there's been some questions whether or not they will be able to continue operating as is. Um, and there was like some rumors that they might be filing for bankruptcy, but someone might have been considering buying them to keep them out of bankruptcy. Well, let's give you a little bit of an update because Chuck E. Cheese and P excuse me, and Peter Piper Pizza, because CEC Entertainment owns both for the record have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protections amid the pandemic closing. So, here's what USA Today says. Whether a kid can still be a kid is now up to a federal bankruptcy judge. The parent company of Chuck E. Cheese, which used the slogan where a kid can be a kid to promote its national chain of pizza and amusement venues, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection late Wednesday. The move came after the coronavirus pandemic forced the company to temporarily close locations. The chain has also been weighed down by debt it accumulated in a private equity buyout several years ago. Parent company CEC Entertainment, which also owns the Peter Piper Pizza chain, which I've never been to personally, but it's actually only like 40 minutes away from me, said it hopes to use the Chapter 11 process to cut debt negotiate concessions with landlords, and emerge as a more sustainable entity. CEC David McPhillips issued a statement calling the pandemic the most challenging event in our company's history and said the company hopes to, quote, get back to the business of delivering memories, entertainment, and pizzas for another 40 years and beyond. CEC said franchise locations are not part of the bankruptcy. So... Uh, that's disappointing to hear, but not completely surprising. Now, here's the thing. I personally suspect, with many of these bankruptcies that are occurring during this time, I think most of them will emerge. Because one of the underlying elements is, like, these companies did nothing wrong. They Seriously, they did nothing wrong. I mean, most of the time during these restructurings, the court says liquidate the company when it's clear that the company is not sustainable when it's not does not have good business practices and when they are unimpressed with their restructuring efforts to make their business sustainable. However, with most of the bankruptcies come, going on right now, it's not because anyone was doing anything wrong. It was because they were forced to close and the debt just piled up. And if they didn't have to worry about that debt, heck, maybe things would be okay. Maybe things would be okay. So I'm not personally that worried about Chuck E. Cheese. I'm also not worried about Alamo Draft House. If AMC decides they're going to, um, you know, file for bankruptcy, I'm not terribly concerned about that either. However, um, you know, we'll still have to let, let a court wait and see, but I don't think the courts are going to let a lot of these places go under for basically doing the right thing. I, I don't think. Um, but anyway, that's my opinion uh, what, what do you think? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Before we get to the next, uh, topic, though, Alex said, hey, Kevin, if they close Chuck E. Cheese, where would be your next place to throw your birthday parties? Well, I haven't thrown a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese for a very, very, very long time. We were thinking of taking the nephews to Chuck E. Cheese for their birthday. I don't know if that's still going to be a thing, but... Who knows? Now, there was... It dawned on me. Um, one second before we go on. I, there was one more topic that dawned on me that I want to... Um, to... Um, you know, discuss, but... I forgot to actually open the art, the article, before beforehand. So I might have to just skip that topic. Um, but uh, hey. Anyway, ah, uh, yeah, I can't find it now. I I had it on my other computer. It's. It's a shame, like, I just, it just slipped my mind, but then it dawned on me, like, I really, really wanted to, to do this, um, 
but here. I found one. I found it. I found it, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so anyway, before we get to the next topic, if you're enjoying the video, I see there's at least 27 people here. Uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And yeah. So with that out of the way, let's talk about our third topic. And our third topic is Amazon. Now, interestingly, we're not talking about Amazon cheating sellers today. We're not talking about Amazon... Um, you know, treating their employees and workers badly, although there was an article about how Amazon was being criticized more than the Chinese firm Alibaba, because apparently Alibaba has been treating their employees much better than Americans. Um, it was interesting, but then I decided that this article might be a heck of a lot more fun. Amazon will rename a Seattle sports station Climate Pledge Arena after buying the naming rights. <laughs> okay, so let me explain exactly what's going on for those of you who might be a little confused about why this is news. You remember those um, protests that Amazon was dealing with earlier this year? Not the ones about the coronavirus, but the ones before that. The first protesters to get fired from Amazon were protesting the company because of their poor commitment to the environment. They felt that Amazon was extremely bad for the environment, and they are. And they felt that Amazon wasn't taking the environment seriously, which they are not. And they started protesting. Now, Amazon, a few days ago, pledged $2 billion to, you know, fight negative climate, whatever. You know, basically, hey, we're going to commit $2 billion to being better for the environment. And I, I didn't report on it because it didn't seem like that big of a story at the time. But now it is, because apparently one of the ways that they are spending that $2 billion is by renaming this sports stadium and doing what they can to make the um, sports stadium as green as possible. This is virtual signaling at the silliest level. So here it is. Amazon just bought the naming rights to a Seattle sports arena, renaming it Climate Pledge Arena. Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO, announced the change in an Instagram post on Thursday, saying its name was chosen, quote, as a regular reminder of the urgent need for climate action. Never mind that Jeff Bezos probably should be rethinking his entire company if he's concerned if there's an urgent need for climate action because of all those boxes that stack up. And those are not eco-friendly at all, but whatever. Bezos said the arena will be the first net zero carbon certified area arena in the world and will generate zero waste from its operations or its events. The facility will also use reclaimed rainwater for its ice system to create the greenest ice in the NHL. Not going to lie, using rainwater for your ice, that's uh, that's pretty not in interesting. I wonder if that's also going to include the ice cubes in the drink. So there's the, um, there's what the sign's going to look like. Um, oh, the Sorry about that, folks. And that's the, you know, an artist's rendering of what they want this all to look like. So, in a press about the renaming, Amazon outlined some other climate-focused changes it's making to the arena. The arena will be powered solely by electricity and will have on-site solar panels. Nearly 75% of the arena's food will be locally sourced and unused food will be donated. Tickets to WNBA um, and NHL games can also be used for free public transit rides. Interesting. Um, Single-use plastics will be banned according to NHL Seattle, and there will be no trash cans on site, only recycling and compos compositing um, bins. Now, I I'm kind of wondering about that one. Does that mean they're going to be handing out metal forks and knives? to people because that seems like a bad idea when people get drunk and into fights because their favorite team is losing. That that just seems like a bad idea. The arena's 44 million pound roof will be reused in the new construction. The facility, currently called the New Arena at Seattle Center, but formerly known as Key Arena, was the home of the Seattle Supersonics NBA team and is the home of the Seattle Storm WNBA team, which temporarily relocated to University of Washington's area. So, those are the bullet points. And, uh, look, I don't want to knock too much uh, 
eco-friendly building, that's certainly nice. I'm all for more green solar power, you know, reusable um, elements, all that jazz. I, I, I'm an environmentalist. What can I say? I do care about the environment. Um, but I don't think, this is not Amazon taking the environment seriously. This is Amazon virtue signaling. They've got, they're not actually doing anything major that would contribute to a better planet. Like I said, their core business is shipping packages and they are wasting a lot of cardboard, killing a lot of trees to ship billions of packages every year. It's it's a recipe for disaster if you are Mother Earth. And it, look, it's nice that Amazon is trying, but I say try harder. I say actually do something that's going to work. I don't think this is going to do all that much. It's just something so that they can say, look at us, look at us, we're green. All while saying, well, ignore the trash. Ignore the fact that, you know, our boxes can fill the Empire State Building like a hundred times a day with trash with how many boxes we ship. You know, just ignore that. We're, we're recycling rainwater. We're recycling rainwater. That That's what makes us environmentally friendly. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. What do you think? I would love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. And now, uh, with that out of the way, I see that we still have 18 people. If any of you have not given a thumbs up yet, that would be really appreciated. It helps the video out. But with that out of the way, let's talk about main topic number four. And the sad thing about main topic number four is I honestly expected it to happen I, I am not surprised by this at all but disney has officially announced that they are going to completely change the theme of splash mountain completely change the theme of splash mountain now and they're going to change it to a princess and the frog theme which makes sense and was also what was requested so Here's the thing. Let, let, let me first talk about all the good things about this. First of all, I do love Prince and the Frog. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but right back there. Uh, yeah, that's a Prince and the Frog poster. It's signed by the directors, animators, and Randy Newman. It is not my wife's poster. It is my poster. I have no shame in saying I like the Princess and the Frog. I have no shame in saying that. So if you're going to rename it to anything, this actually makes perfect sense. Because not only do they have the Bayou, not only... Does the re-theme look cool? You can kind of, you know, redo it. Um, well, here's the thing. Critter Country is also next to New Orleans, so now you can actually expand the New Orleans section, and you can have, like, you know, the city, and then you can have the Bayou section. And the music in Prince and the Frog is excellent. Where I'm concerned about this, and this has kind of always been my thing, is that you give an inch, they will go 10 miles with it. Now... Here's the thing. Disney has said that this was in pl the plans for a year. I completely don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think this is them bowing to social pressures because people want to keep acting like Splash Mountain is a racist ride when it's not. It's not. They did remove all the problematic elements from Song of the South and millions of people re like ride Song of not Song of the South. Um ride Splash Mountain. And they don't walk away thinking like, well, that was an outdated racist piece of garbage. They, you don't hear anyone saying that. Because it's not about racism. It's not about slavery. It's about a rabbit outwitting a fox and a bear. That's what it is. And, you know, I'm going to miss it. I, I'm going to miss it. I, I am also open to this, to this theme. I mean, this, this could be a lot of fun. But you know how I said there was that whole, you know, if you give them an inch, they'll go a mile. Here's the thing. Yeah, there's like a, a couple hundred thousand people who signed a petition and complained on Twitter that this needed to be changed. Here's the thing. There are millions of people who had no issue with it otherwise. And you couldn't just, oh, no, thank you. You couldn't just say, hey, we're going to retheme this and have everything be okay. No, 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 no. People on Twitter had to start asking about other rides. So, you know, they're like, hey, what about the Jungle Cruise? I mean, the Jungle Cruise 
is problematic. Um, then there was e there was even um, people complain about Peter Pan. Like this is what's going to happen if you're not careful. Um, you see tweets like this, like people who are asking for Splash Mountain. Like you think they're saying thank you for listening to us. It was written considered like now get rid of the racist depictions in Jungle Cruise and Peter Pan's flight. Um, you know. And look at this one. Change the Jungle Cruise for Emperor's New Groove. Um, yeah. You cannot please anyone. They're, it's like if there's... They're going to find one thing to complain about. You're going to oblige and change. You're going to spend millions of dollars really for no reason. For no reason. But because people are offended. And then look at this guy. Does Haunted fit in Liberty Square? Pirates in Adventureland, uh, like Aladdin during the 8th century. Um, yeah, you see this, and maybe this guy's being silly. I, I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, is what's next? Because I'm hearing people saying, like, they actually want Disney to go to the Hall of Presidents and remove the presidents that are a problem. Well, who gets to decide which presidents are a problem? in that show. Some people might have some ideas who they would personally take out and others would not. But that's also not the point of the Hall of Presidents. The Hall of Presidents is these are all the presidents. And the current president makes a speech. That's how it's always worked. But now people want them to, I guess, remove Trump and Washington and uh, maybe Bill Clinton. I don't know. So I'm going to hold off this might be fun, though. I mean, it, it's going to be the same ride. It's not like they're going to drastically change it. Heck, the logs are even the same. But even though this looks kind of cool, I just see this as being like, look, you can't win on this. You can't win on this. Because if it's not one thing, it's going to be another. And a lot of people love Space Mountain, not Space Mountain, Splash Mountain. And there was nothing... But taken on its own merits, there was nothing wrong with Splash Mountain. There was nothing wrong with it. Other than that it was based on a problematic movie that most people have not seen. And thanks to Disney, most people are not even aware exists. Now, I want to add one more thing just to show that I'm not, you know, that I'm still, like, understanding, like, how this could be a good thing. The last time I went on Splash Mountain in Disneyland, the animatronics were definitely rusty. We'll put it that way. They uh, Some of them didn't work. I mean, it actually looked like those busted me mechanics that you see spoofed on The Simpsons and stuff all the time. And I could definitely see the thing, at the very least, needing a refurbishment. So, hey, if you're going to go in and you're going to refurbishment, and this ride has clearly been a headache for a long time, you might as well just re-theme the whole thing. So, And because it's a current, a semi-current movie, it's hard to believe this movie's 10 years old now. Um, it's a semi-current movie. Tiana has been, uh, has seen a resurgence in popularity. The movie has seen a resurgence in popularity. People are actually appreciating it for what it was. I remember when The Prince and the Frog came out, and you would think that people would say, oh, this is a wonderful thing that Disney has done, and no. You know what they complained about? This isn't really our first African-American princess. You know, she's a frog the whole time, which I remember asking, what, what's that matter? matter it's the princess and the frog yeah yeah she turns into a frog so it's nice that people are appreciating the movie now and since they're appreciating it now disney can probably you know use this attraction to sell a bunch of merchandise for a movie that they don't want to hide away in the closet so you know there's probably some deeper meaning like well this is our best excuse to get rid of it so anyway i'd like to know what it, all of you think about this do you agree with this retheming do you not agree i would love to know Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. And let's see here. Um, oh, I got another super chat from Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. I will drink to you. By the way, because we got $10 in super chats today, we're going to give away a free movie at the end of the show. So keep keep in mind. Uh, anyway, um... With that out of the the way, um, one second, folks. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, so, anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about main topic number five, and our fifth main topic 
I want to talk about one of my favorite shows of all time. Now, I have a few shows that are some of my favorite shows of all time. Breaking Bad, Simpsons, Game of Thrones. I really like Case Close and Murder, She Wrote. I love Mysteries. Um, when it comes to comedies, I I do like... I, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Family Matters. Not going to lie. Um, so, anyway. One of my favorite shows, though, and has been for a long time, is South Park. I really like South Park. And I am definitely looking forward to South Park coming back. Because I am very fascinated to see what their opinion is going to be on the current pandemic. I don't always agree with South Park politics, but they are able to articulate them in a way that is, um, how should I put it, that's interesting and extremely funny. It, it's very, so I, I'm definitely interested to see what they're thinking about the pandemic, the mask situation. And South Park actually has been removed from Hulu because in a $500 million deal, HBO Max is now the exclusive home to the South Park show. Not the movie, the show. Unfortunately, not all of the episodes are available. There are five episodes that are missing from the catalog. And this is another reason why you want to keep your DVDs, and your Blu-rays. Now, they all have a reoccurring theme, but this concerns me because in the A, considering we're in the age where it's like we're trying to get things removed and buried, I would not be surprised that this is not the first time episodes got removed. So anyway, let's look at this Collider th talk. The Because what episodes of South Park have been removed? Well, the episodes in question controversially depict the Prophet Muhammad which in Islamic religion is expressly forbidden. The episodes missing, missing from HBO Max are Super Best Friends from Season 5, 200 and 201 from Season 14, and Cartoon Wars Part 1 and Cartoon Wars Part 2 from Season 10. The latter episodes, you'll recall, include South Park's famous skewering of Family Guy. Now, while you won't be able to watch these on HBO Max, they are still available to stream on the official South Park website. Now, here's why they most likely removed them. These episodes were a problem for Comedy Central, particularly Cartoon Wars Part 2 and 200. In both those cases, Comedy Central was threatened with violence if they were to air images of Mohammed or even air the second part of the episode uncut. Now, in both these circumstances, Comedy Central mistakenly, in my opinion, caved. And in fact, 201 had a speech that was censored by Comedy Central, where Kyle basically says, I learned something today. I learned that the way you, how you really get your way, how you really get people to do things, is to threaten violence. Because violent, with violence, when you threaten it, threaten people with violence, you have true power. Speech is a little bit more uncomfortable considering recent events. But I'm looking at this and it's like HBO Max has basically decided in advance that they were going to pull episodes. But, what ha but the thing is South Park has a lot of unpopular opinions. They have a lot of unpopular opinions because they're South Park. You know, like what are you going to do? do they they speak their mind and they're unapologetic about it they but some other episodes i wonder are they also going to get pulled there's an episode where i believe it was um kyle who wants to become a black person he feels like he's more of a black person and then when his father comes in and talks to the doctor he says you know what i've always felt like i'm like a dolphin like, I'm like a dolphin, and I feel one with the sea. Can you turn me into a dolphin? And the episode was basically looking at, you know, transgenderism from a real hard lens. Like, when does it stop? Like, when is this not okay anymore? And that could be considered really offensive to some people. Are we going to pull that episode? There's another episode uh, where the kids want to win a bobsledding race... 
and Cartman gets into a fight with Token, the, the one black character. And because Token is black, Cartman is arrested for a hate crime. Even though he was just having a basic, you know, schoolyard fight with, that he's had a million times with any other boys. And the episode argues that when you have hate laws, you basically let certain people have more power over other people saying like you get special treatment because of your skin color and they argue that hate laws are racist. Now again, I'm not you don't have to necessarily agree with these points of views, but are we going to pull that episode too? Like so that's what's concerning. Now again, these episodes were kind of pulled to a certain extent on Hulu and stuff, so this isn't completely surprising. But it is disappointing because HBO Max is kind of off to a poor start in my opinion. And I think we're getting a little trigger happy because okay so hbo max has pulled gone with the wind they brought it back by the way and it has that almost five minute intro and hey if that's what we have to deal with to have it back great but now they're pulling south park episodes what else are they going to pull i know there's certain car- looney tunes cartoons they're not going to be putting up there and then you have sky tv the um the united kingdom channel that's um putting disclaimers on movies even even movies that are, like, just a year old. Like, they're warning that the 2019 Aladdin already has outdated cultural references. Like, when does this stop? That's my question. When does this stop? I think, think, um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm confused. Like, how much longer can this go on? I, I don't know. But anyway, I would like to know, what are your thoughts about this? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. Now then, um, I'm going to take a moment to address Seattle builds here. Um, Seattle builds, here's the thing. You are a longtime follower, and I appreciate that. And I know that you're trying to help, but... I have not watched enough of Meet Kevin to un- to comfortably say I recommend that. I have not. So do not share his links. Like, I might even make a video about, about Meet Kevin later on. I know you're trying to help people, but now is not the time. It's not the place. So, I, you know, I'm glad you like him, but, you know, I need to know something before... I start sending my viewers over to his channel. So, you know, I, I've looked a little bit at Meet Kevin's channel. And there's some things about it that concern me. And I might share that at a later point. But right now we're talking at the topics on hand. We're not talking about Meet Kevin. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say about, about that. But now let's head to our final topic and then we will be giving away a digital movie and for our final topic we are talking about the movie theaters because you know i'm i'm seeing this well let me just show you so you know what's going on they've been a lot of uh, websites have been doing studies and this is fine like this is what they do and in these studies they've shown that nearly 50 percent of americans plan to avoid movie theaters upon reopening claims new studies Now, the reason I want to talk about this briefly is because it's interesting how these headlines are kind of phrased in a way that this is a bad thing, when in fact, it's really not as bad as you think it is. Now, let's first of all take the the surveys at face value. Let's just say these surveys were all-encompassing of America, and that truly half of America was not going to be going back to the theaters when they reopen. I mean... On the surface, that sounds pretty bad. But what about the other statistic? The other thing you have to keep in mind is that AMC, Regal, Cinemark, Alamo Drafthouse, all of these companies, they can only fill 30 to 50% of their attendance for the near future. 30 to 50%. That's all they can do. So roughly half of, of their seats. Now think about it. If nearly 50% of Americans plan to go to the theaters, it sounds like there's going to, for the most part, be seats there to accompany those people. The people, the seats that aren't going to be made available to them, those people weren't going to come anyway. So this isn't the negative thing 
that websites are trying to make it out to be. It's not ideal. I'm sure they would like it if 100% of people would like to go back. But then what do you have? You have basically a bunch of seats that can't be sold anyway. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit of a process to get people back into the theaters and for people to feel safe. And, of course, with rising COVID-19 cases, that that's difficult. But, hey, here's the thing. You say 50% of Americans don't want to go to the theaters. That's fine. Theaters can only sell half of their seats. So what's the problem? What's the problem? I mean, maybe I'm missing something. But under those things, um, that's... I, I say there's no problem at that point. There's no problem. So anyway, I would like to know what your thoughts on that are. Um, comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. And with that done, let's give away a movie. Now, I know you're trying to help Seattle Builds, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about right now. I need to do some research first. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, I that's all I'm say, saying. So, and... Here's the bottom here's the bottom line. I I I mean this SBA grant, I don't know what to tell you on that one. I haven't researched it. And yeah, I could send them to someone's channel to get more information, but I don't know if that person's information is accurate. Like they people just need to do their own research on that one. So anyway, anyway, I've got two movies here that I can give out. So which one should I give up um I'll check my email later. Which movie would you guys like to get? Would you like to get Mr. Smith Goes to Washington or Lawrence of Arabia? Do I have any? Do I have any other movies I can uh, I can give out? I'm, I'm sure I. I'm sure I do. I gave out Sonic the Hedgehog. Um. Yeah. No. Nope, these are the movies I have for the time being. I know I have some Star Wars movies, but they're in the other room. Um, so who? So do we want Mr. Smith Goes to Washington or Lawrence of Arabia to be given out today? Which one? Just feel free to... Lawrence of Arabia, okay. That's, we've got to vote for Lawrence. Do we have any, any concurs or any one wants Mr. Smith? We'll ultimately be, um, whenever we get to $10 in Super Chats, I'll give away, like, a digital movie or something. So, um, Ryan says, Mr. Smith, oh, does anyone, is there, like, a tiebreaker, or do we need to flip a coin? So... And just to answer a question, Ryan, I don't... The Zippity Doo Dah song is not the issue. <laughs> At least it shouldn't be. Um, there probably will not be any more merchandise with Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, or Br'er Bear. I think that was uh, 20 likes of 23 watching. Yeah, well, hey, if you'd like to give me another thumbs up, ride, share, source, driver, feel free. So, okay, I guess we're going to give out Lawrence of Arabia. So, first thing you got to do is you got to go to moviesanywhere.com well, there we go uh, and you have to input this code have to enter that code and the first person to get there and enter it will get Lawrence of Arabia for free so so oh you already oh you already gave okay awesome I I appreciate that so and now then let's see if there's any questions I missed there was actually a lot of comments here so I appreciate that folks Let's see here. Um, are you okay? Yeah. Well, I'm not been feeling great the last few days, but we're getting tested. I'm feeling a little better, so you know. Um, 
or the game. Hey, Tommy was here at the very list. Um, um, Mark says, Guillaume Bray syndrome is actually is something I am very aware of. My late best friend had it from September 30th, 2000 until his passing May 29th, 2004. My sympathies to you, to you for what you went through. I appreciate that, Mark. Um, Romeo says, you got my email about Panda Express. Uh, let's see here. Mm, I must not have got, I must not have gotten the email on, on Panda Express. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, I don't see it here. So sorry. I guess I didn't get that email. Um. Hello. There was no thumb showing here. Uh oh. Um. Some devices don't show it. Um. So. Um, it's Moose. Are there a lot of Chuck E. Cheese franchises out there? Yeah, quite a bit, actually. Let's see here. Uh, Seattle Builds 2 says, Collecting rainwater can get you in prison in a lot of states. It's also illegal in Nevada, I believe, to drown a horse in a bathtub. So, funny laws, right? Let's see. <laughs> uh... And also, there's nothing wrong with you, Kevin. You don't need to be... Well, eh, the doctor felt like I should be because I... And keep in mind, like, I'm feeling a little better now, but I was having some pretty bad symptoms yesterday, so... Uh, yep. Yep. Ah, Thomas, you you bought some shares on Amazon. Well, I can't argue too much. Amazon stock does very well. Um, let's see here. Amazon is not a necessity. I've never used it. I have all the things I want. Well, glad to hear, Deborah. Um, yeah, no, I no, I don't think that cartoon will be on HBO Max. So. And well, I'm glad that the Panda Express um, delivery is working, Romeo. Um. So, you know what I'm going to do, Seattle Builds? I am going to look into this grant, and I might report on it myself. It, it sounds, although I will argue, it's not free money. It's uh, Taxpayers do end up paying for that, but, you know, let's see here. So... Have you used HBO Max or Peacock? Yeah, I, I have HBO Max. Peacock. Is Peacock out yet? Um, let me... Let me see if uh, Peacock is... Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Here's Peacock. Showing off uh, all these things. It's free as a bird. Streaming July 15th. So, uh, there's also a, ooh, more to watch. Save 40% off your first year, $29.99 a year. Well, shoot, folks. I guess, I guess I'm getting Peacock. $30 for a year? Shoot, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Why not? It ends up being a, a tax write-off for me anyway. So, are there 80s and 90s sitcoms on HBO Max? Um, there are some 90, 80s and 90s sitcoms on HBO Max. They are, there are. We'll find out if I... I probably did not get the coronavirus, but we will... We will see. Um, I got tested, so... David says, I'm getting Peacock for the new... Oh, they're bringing Saved by the Bell back? Why? No offense if you like Saved by the Bell. Um, I I didn't like Full House, so maybe I was just missing something as a 90s kid, but I... Yeah. Um, I hope you just get antibodies and are all set. Yeah, me too. I hope so. Did anyone get Lawrence of Arabia? Anyone get Lawrence of Arabia? Like, that would... be nice to know before I 
actually ended this stream. So, I actually got most of the topics done pretty early, so, uh, you know, well, anyway, I'm sure whoever got it can let me know in the comment section below. So, I think we're just going to end it right here. Um, you know, my throat's starting to feel sore again. We'll see if there's a show tomorrow or not. Like I said, the health has been on... I've kind of been fighting through, um... So... So, you know, anyway. Um... Okay, we're gonna end this now. We'll see about doing a show tomorrow. Maybe a little earlier, who knows. But, uh, thank you for watching, and thank you for spending time with me. The super chats, the questions, the comments, all that jazz. Thank you so much, and take care of yourselves. Have a good one.